Jeffrey, I have something to tell you. We are the members, we the members of the All City Jazz Ensemble would like to present you with a gift in honor of your courage and good cheer and inspiration you gave all of us. Well, that was laying it on with a trowel, but okay. He had our interest anyway. So Jeffrey, we hereby proclaim you to be an honorary member of the band. It is my pleasure to give you this official all city t-shirt and a very special all city ball cap. He took off his own cap and gave it to Jeffrey. Underneath it, he was bald. Biff had shaven his head in tribute my brother. Just as I started to get the mental grasp on this, everyone else reached for their hats too. At a signal from Annette, who was standing with Renee by the piano, they all whipped off their hats as well. My mom was the only person in the room with hair long enough to comb. I flashed back to Annette and Renee matching, matching super short dues, and suddenly it all made sense. Suddenly, too, I had a huge lump in my throat. Jeffrey was running all over the room, hugging everyone, rubbing players' heads for good luck. And my mom was standing there next to Mr. Watrust, whose neutral baldness had excused him from the pre-show razor festing, razoring festivities. These were unquestionably tears welling up in her eyes, but also looked happy. Honestly, when I saw that look on my mom's face, I practically ran over to Biff and hugged him myself. We hung out for a while. Jeffrey ran up to meet, meet me and buried his head in my stomach. I sort of wrestled free. He looked right up into my eyes and whispered, you're the best drummer in the world. Then my mom started walking out with him so they could find their reserve, reserved front and center seats in the auditorium. When she pulled open the door, my dad almost fell into the room. He had made it after all. When he saw the room full of bare scalps, although though he immediately got a kind of grim facial expression. He gave me a little half wave, mumbled good luck, and wheeled him back around to lead my mom and Jeffrey to their seats. Hmm. Mr. Watrous gathered us all around, gave us a big pep talk, and led us downstage, downstairs onto the stage. The curtain was closed, so we had a few minutes to set up before everyone would see us. We all busy, busied ourselves with little things musicians do right before they play. Testing spit valves, applying last minute drops of valve oil, checking the lugs on a snare drum, the height and a cymbal in order, in short order, we were ready. I was nervous, but glad for that big night. Was about to get started. I sat down behind the drum kit. I was playing I was playing set for the first tune, adjusted the sheet music on its stand, wiped my hands with a grubby little towel. I always kept my sick bag just for that purpose and took a deep breath. Mr. Watrous tapped his baton on the podium. The curtain opened. When the shiny heads of the entire band became visible on the stage, the, audi <laughs> the audience was dead silent. Then as they began to realize what we were what they were seeing i could hear a buzz of whispers then gas then a slow building crescendo of applause before we even played a note we were getting a standing ovation mr watrus led the applause let the the applause rise then fall a bit and then bam he counted us right into the first tune mambo number no. 5 by louis, louis prima i really don't remember playing a single note on the first five or six song. I can only recall nonstop swell of emotion that we were all feeling. The band, Mr. Watchers, the audience, and I hoped Jeff and hoped Jeffrey. Every song went better than the one before. Every solo got hotter and hotter, more and more beautiful. A fast number the fast numbers were a riot of energy and the ballads were put the entire place into some kind of powerful floating dream state. I never experienced anything like it, but I knew the entire point of playing music was 
to hope that once in a while you could bring this feeling to an audience of people. When the curtain closed for intermission, the place went up again. It was great. We all took our time on stage, getting our instruments squared away, slapping fives, rubbing heads. Weird sensation, by the way. And just basking in the success of the first set. Then Mr. W told us to get back to the band room, to get drinks, hit the restrooms, relax for a little while. I set up the congas for the height I liked. I was thirsty and tired, but I couldn't wait to come back down and play a little Latin pieces I'd been sweating over all year. Brian tapped me on the shoulder and gestured with his thumb toward the stairs. We walked up. At the top speed, just outside the band room, my mom was having what looked like an intense discussion with Mr. Stoll, maybe even a discussion. She turned to me with an alarming fake sweet smile she used only when she gets when she got me totally busted for something in a syrupy voice that she always does with the smile she spoke you're playing very well tonight steven thanks mom very well um thanks again especially for a kid who hasn't paid for a drum lesson in over a month ouch then she surprised me mr stole and possibly even herself by grabbing me up in a bear hug you're a wonderful son and a wonderful man. Yeah, another parent bursting forth with the man thing. I'd have to check my chest for signs of hair when I got home. Mr. Stroll broke the moment by pounding me on the shoulder. You're rocking the joint, kiddo. Love the big triplet fill in in satin doll. And the four limb independence is really coming along. I can't wait to hear a Dizzy Gillespie tune. Then Mr. W called all the band members into the room, so I think Mr. Stolen hurried in. My dad and Jeffrey were there. Mr. Watrous got everybody quiet and then gestured to my dad. Event evidently, and, and I couldn't believe this, my father wanted to address the band. He cleared his throat twice, paused for a long, uncomfortable moment, then spoke. I almost didn't come here tonight. I'm a proud man, I guess. I didn't like the idea of accepting charity. I looked around and saw the other kids and Mr. W were looking rather nervous. Even my wife couldn't get me to come. I was all ready to go to work, bury myself in a pile of papers and tell myself I was helping the family by earning more money. But at about five o'clock, as everyone else in the office was leaving for the weekend to go home to their families, I realized that he faltered for a moment. And again, I saw people just didn't know how to take his speech. I don't know. I guess I realized that my family needs a dad more than I need a few extra bucks. Jeffrey, my sweet little boy, needs me to be around to support him when he isn't feeling well. My wife over there needs me to be around to support her all the time. And my big talented boy over there who's play, who is trying to stare at his shoes until I stop talking, at this time, at this, there was some laughter. He deserves a father to see what an amazing musician he is. He also, he's also an amazing brother and just an amazing guy. I know you call him the peasant, more laughter, but I think he's a prince. Thank you, Stephen, for watching out for your family, even when your father wasn't. And thank you all city members for a great concert, a marvelous show of support, and a uh, listen to me ramble. Once more, laughter. My mom walked over, holding Jeffrey's hand, and kissed my dad. It's, it was always a little weird watching your rents kiss, even when it's not in, in a room full of people who actually know you, but this was actually kind of nice. It occurred to me that it was the first time I'd seen them kiss in a while. Then I looked down at Jeffrey, who had a really miserable look on his face, like he was tasting something vile. Turns out he was. The next moment, he ran over to the trash can and vomited into it. I ran over to him, got my arms around him. Just then, the lights blinked. Annette and Renee were at the door, bringing, bringing glad tidings of box office, office and bake sales. Without all the receipts having been counted yet, the running total for the event was over $21,000. Half the room cheered, while the other half 
the half that had noticed Jeffrey's run was just standing around looking edgy once again. I wasn't really worried yet. Jeffrey's meds made him nauseous all the time. Real danger sign would be a fever. So I felt Jeffrey's forehead. It was really hot. I hated to say it. I hated to say what I said next. I knew I was going to cause some trouble, but I knew what doctors had said about not delaying treatment at this point. Um, Mom, I think Jeffrey has a temp. This was set off a little wave of alarm. My parents knew somebody has to go rushing out there with Jeffrey to the ER, but who? One of them, both, and I was supposed to skip out in my biggest moment in my life, go with them. Jeffrey looked at me. Stephen, I feel really bad, and Matt Medic is at home. Again, please come with me. I'm scared. You know how sometimes when you have a high pressure decision you make to make you feel like everyone is looking at you? Well, in this case, everyone really was looking at me. Annette, Renee, Mr. W, Mom, Dad, Jeffrey, four trombone players, and God's sake, what was I supposed to walk out on the music for my brother, or was I supposed to stay and play the concert? I looked at all the faces. I wasn't sure. I wiped the head in every direction. I whipped my head in every direction, searching for some clue in the eyes. And then I got a clue from this girl I had only ever met once. Stay with your brother, Stephen. Stay with him no matter what. Do you promise? I had promised Samantha I would be there for Jeffrey, and there would be other concerts. Mr. W., I have to, I know, go. My eyes started to well up. I'm so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was supposed to be your big star. Stephen, you have been more of a star to me than anyone at this moment. Go, take care of your brother. We'll be fine. Mom and Mom was on her way out the door. Dad was right behind her, carrying Jeffrey. I stared at, I started after them. But Renee and Annette were there right in front of me. Renee hugged me and wished me luck. Then Annette put her casted hand on my shoulder. I wasn't sure what to say. Some team we make, huh, Annette? You can't play the concert, and I could play, but I have to run out. Then she put her good hand on my other shoulder and gave me something to wonder about. She said, I think we make a great team. And then she kissed me on the cheek. As I ran out of the room to chase after the distracted parents, the, the distant backs of my parents, my mind was reeling. Annette had kissed me. Who'd have thunk it? 